Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Software Testing. It's me, Daniel. Happy that you're here today. Today we have already the third community question that I got sent over, and I'm pretty happy that already three brave software test engineers sent me their questions, and I would like to get more of them. So if you would like to send me your question, and if you would like to be part of one of my videos, send me a message on my social media. You find everything on my blog adventures in QA and get in contact with me and then you can be part of one of the videos. And today we have Hanan in my questions actually and or in the community questions and let's listen to his question. Hey, before we start with the main video, I would like to thank you the following companies for their support. They support me through the YouTube membership program that I created for companies who care about software testing and are active in supporting the testing community. Thank you once again. If you want to learn more about the supporters, check the video description down below to find the links to their products. If you miss your logo on this page, follow the QR code or send me an email. Happy testing and now back to the main video. Hi Daniel, so my question is, what are some key testing strategies that a sole QA can adopt to drive their testing with more testing coverage? Yeah, thank you Hanan for the great question of having a testing strategy in a team. And if I understood your question correct, you are the sole, the only one test in your company. Well, that makes things more difficult, right? Because for those of you who are already working as the, the one and only software test engineer in a company, you are alone fighting against the developers or other stakeholders or whoever is taking part of the software development process. So it might be difficult to establish, like let's say, a more holistic product testing strategy. So my very first impression or like my very first in, in intention to answer the question would be find like-minded people in your company, like talk to developers, see who from the developer's point of view have a like a, like a quality mindset and would like to work towards the testing strategy, for example. So find like-minded people and then try to establish together the quality mindset in your team. And if you have done that already, you are already pretty good in the game of establishing a long running testing strategy. And then take it from there, take small, tiny steps to establish things. And things with things, what I meant with things is, of course, a testing strategy and a testing strategy can, can be completely different or is completely different in every company. I work for many companies now and the testing strategies always look different. This depends on the software development life cycle, the tech stack, the product, the service that you offer to your customers. So it's completely different also from an industry perspective. And that's why you could follow some of the things that I was going to mention right now, what I think should be part of a testing strategy. But as I said before, in your position as the one and only software test engineer, try to establish tiny baby steps in order to, to make everybody being part of the testing strategy in the long run and also get the acceptance of it. So, however, what are the things that I would see in a testing strategy that can be helpful? So, but disclaimer, it's just like some of the parts that I can see in a testing strategy. They might be completely different ones and other ones. So, I might, I made some notes again to give you some more like a detailed view on a testing strategy. And I think there is also a video upcoming soonish on my YouTube channel about testing strategy for test automation. So stay tuned, make sure to follow, to subscribe, to not miss the video. Um, so what are the things that I see as a must in a testing strategy? And I'll compile nine aspects basically. So the very first one I would say is to have the objective and the scope ready for your testing strategy. So what is in scope? What are you going to test? Is the testing strategy a company-wide test strategy? So the scope might be really big and a lot of stuff to cover. Or is it more like, let's say, a local focused one team test strategy? It might be much smaller, more iterative, more, more faster and stuff. And it's also easier to prepare. So this is important to know. So then, of course, you have to define things like, okay, what are my main objectives? What I would test? Is it new features? Is it, what is the feature that I would like to test? What is the software under test? And, and also then, of course, like what I just said, the scope company-wide or like in a narrow more space. So that's the first part objective and scope. 
The second one that I see in a testing strategy are the test levels and the test types that must be defined. So on which level you would like to test your application. Take the typical past test pyramid. You would like to test on a unit level, like really close to the developers. Is it more on the integration, system integration level? Is it on an API level? Is it on an end-to-end uh, -end UI use case? It really depends on your product that you're building, on which level you would like to automate. But I can tell you, you have to test the multiple layers, not only what I see sometimes in companies, hey, let's test everything from a UI perspective, or let's test everything only on a unit testing level. So this is like two extremes and not good in the long run. So really think about like your tech stack, get knowledge about your tech stack and then see how you can test and also what things developers can test for you in a strategy and write it down. Uh, what are the test types, for example? So of course, the main the two big types are like functional, non-functional testing. So what do you would like to test from a functionality point of view? Uh, what kind of techniques do you would like to use? Like regression testing, smoke testing, exploratory testing, acceptance testing, and so forth and so forth. So write down this, the things that you would like to test from that point of view. On a non-functional side, this is also sometimes that I see companies missing in test strategies are yeah, the non-functional requirements like usability, accessibility, security, load and performance testing are usually aspects or testing types that are like very down the road let's say, right? So people really think of that like, oh God, we forgot about it, or it's too late, or something happened in production. Then they really first thought, uh, think about these types. So that's something that you also be have to at least think about, talk about it in your team. How do you would like to tackle those non-functional requirements? Um, next thing that I could see in a, in a testing strategy is the, the approach, like I would, I would call it the testing methodologies, like how you would like to uh, to, to assess quality in your company? Do you would like to use like a shift left approach? Do you would like to use risk-based testing alongside like the normal functional manual testing? Um, what's with automation? I mean, automation should definitely be part of the testing strategy to you know free up your time to focus on the more challenging parts and stuff like that. So automation is also part of there. Um, Next thing that I can see in a testing strategy are the environments, the test environments and the infrastructure itself. So where do you would like to test? Which staging environments do you have? You have the developer sandbox, you have an integration system, you have a pre-production staging system, you have the production system. And how do you would like to use the different um, environments? Um, the same goes then with uh, the, the devices that you would like to use for testing. Is your application a web-based application? Like how many different browser combinations do you need? You develop a mobile app, how many different mobile devices do you have to test on? Is there a mix of things that you have to cover? And is it an IoT-based application? So really it depends on your technology stack on which device you would like to test. And this affects also the test environment in the long run. And then from an infrastructure point of view, like CI, CD pipeline, how are you doing releases? How often are you going to release and so forth and so forth? to use feature flags, for example, and there's so many things to consider. Yeah. Um, the next one, an obvious one, like the tooling, the test tooling. So which test automation or testing tools do you uh, use in your company, in your team? Which one you, you're missing? Which one you're using already? So this is also something to, to actually mention somewhere in the strategy that everybody knows, okay, we're using tool X, Y, Z for that purpose. Write it down give some instruction, uh, prepare some trainings, and then bring people to workshops and stuff like that. Um, one thing that I could think of people saying, oh, Daniel, that's completely wrong. We don't want to see that in, in, in our strategy is test design and execution. I know writing test cases is not the most happiest and, and uh, good thing that testers would like to do in companies, uh, especially in agile context where like maybe the iteration is so fast and you don't have to time to write too many test cases and long running test cases. However, there are industries and fields out there that rely on test cases like regulated environments. You have to write test cases, document the test cases and then in the long run automate them and stuff like that. So think about test design, how you would like to design your test activities and also the test execution, what test data you need. How do you do test data management, stuff like that. Where to write the test, where to execute them. Something to write down. Doesn't need to be like in 
super heavy uh, lifted uh, 200 pages document in the long run test strategy try to use a lean approach i mean I, I gave an example a couple of weeks ago on the one page test plan how you can actually work on uh, planning your testing activities on a one page it could be helpful um, then another one that I could also see in a testing strategy, the defect management, like where to file bugs, how to report issues, uh, how to prioritize them, how to organize them in, in, in different teams. I mean, if in your case, and then if you're like the, in the sole tester, I think you may only be in one team or maybe two teams. Still, you need to find a way how to manage the defects and the bugs. Um, if metrics is something that somebody would like to take a look at, like stakeholders, or you have to report to customers, uh, you also have to think about metrics, reporting structures, to give some idea on like what's part of the current testing approach, like how many findings, stuff like that. But I'm not the biggest fan of testing metrics and, and dashboards and reportings that in, I have seen people blaming testing for that. Oh, we have too many bugs, testing is bad, but we all know that's not the truth, right? So. Think about it, and if you don't need it, don't put it in the testing strategy. And I mean, I already said it in the beginning, I, one of the things that is something that, that you should not write down in the testing strategy, but at least you can mention them, like, is there a community of practice? Is there a, um, a pool of people that have like a, the same mindset that you have from a testing perspective? Note them down, like, hey, there are people in the company who would like to contribute to the testing strategy, or there are people who are in charge for doing things for the testing strategy in the long run, or they should work on the tooling. Somebody is working on the test levels. Somebody is working on the environment. So there are so many people. Cross collaboration and test strategy is really important because in the long run, it's a team effort. It's a whole company effort to have a test strategy established. It cannot only be the, the, the one sole software test engineer QA who should be in charge for the testing strategy. Of course, this person should be the quality advocate of like advocating for quality, but in the long run, this mindset should be established in the whole company so that everybody's contributing it to get something good out of it, right? And yeah, so these are basically like, I think nine, nine, nine aspects that I see in a testing strategy. There might be more, there might be less. Again, as I said before in my introduction of the video, Depending on your context, depending on the company size, the team size, it might differ. And with that, we are coming to an end. I hope, Hanan, I answered the question to your happiness. Let me know in the comment if you like the answer or not. Otherwise, we can do another round of video questions on that topic or we do like a, a thread in the comment section. Um, thanks for sending me the question. So if you'd like to get in contact with Hanan and also to share your perspective on testing strategy with him, Check the link down below. His LinkedIn URL is part of the video description. Thanks again for the video and for the question, basically. And if you have a question, send it to me via direct message. I send you some instruction how the video should look like. I mean, you have seen it somehow in the video already. So as always, send me messages. That's cool. I'm happy about it. And yeah, we're coming to an end. Thanks as always for coming by. Like it, subscribe it and share it if you like the video to support me to grow my channel even further. Thanks for coming by. See you next time. Ciao, ciao.